and I have just heard we are all ready for our next run, so I'm going to let Freeland take it over with Castlevania Three: Dracula's Curse, Trevor Only versus Alucard Bidwar. Alrighty, good morning everyone and welcome to the Castlevania block. We're gonna open it up with a Castlevania 3 run. And uh, joining me today will be Kutushida and Dizdon. They'll be assisting me in the commentary. So if you want to introduce yourself to everyone, go right on ahead. Kutu, you first. You were, uh, you were named first. I was. Well, thank you and hello everybody. Kida, I play this game. A lot of times. And so that's why I'm here. Go ahead, Dizzy. And, and I'm Dizdon. I'm responsible for Kutsu. Um, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> uh, I also speedrun this game. And if it's Alucard, I also run that category. All right. So we're going to get this run up and started. We're going to get to the name screen. So obviously, the first thing the game tells us to do is enter your name. So we're going to do that. And while you're doing that, you wanted me to do a thing because it's a thing I do. So for those who know right. and those who do not, we are going to pray for some good RNG. RNG Jesus, full of random, hallowed be thy name. Thy random come, thy will be done on Twitch as it is at GDQ. Give us this day our daily RNG and forgive us our bad timing as we forgive the bad timing and bad RNG against us. And lead us not into a failure, but an amazing Alucard or Trevor marathon run. Amen. Amen. Now let's go whip Dracula. All right, now it's time for Trevor to say the prayer. Bum, 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 right, so bum, 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 on go, we'll start the timer. So three, two, one, go. And All right, so this is the Castlevania 3 run. So if you want to uh, let me in on which run we're doing, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, you probably need to know that, huh? We have got the Alucard route. Not like it matters on this stage, because every run starts the exact same in first quest. All right, so what we're going to do at first is pick up whip upgrades. We're going to need to collect a certain number of hearts as well. We're going to pick up the most broken sub weapon in the game. We're going to carry it pretty much through the entire game, except for the final stage. And we're going to pick it up on this screen here. It is the holy water sub weapon. Holy water. And then after picking it up, we're going to... We're gonna pick up, and we're gonna hit multiple hitboxes with it, try and pick up a shot multiplier, which is uh, kind of the theme with the sub weapons in the classic Castlevania games. Same in Castlevania 1 and Castlevania 4. And here we see our first Medusa head, and they're so gone. You saw right there that, Med you saw right there that Medusa head did drop a heart there, so we have to keep track of the. Uh, Number of heart drops because every fifth enemy drop results in a sub weapon drop, and we don't want that. No, we don't, do we, happen. Kutsu? Mm, that's kind of when you have a bad time. We're kind of lucky that we get to or play the Alucard route. Mm. Alucard himself has less of an issue of losing. All right. We've now had two drops. I believe we're at three now, because uh, the mul double shot multiplier also counts as a drop towards that total. But did you get that one from a uh, candle? Nah, uh, I think one of the zombies dropped. Okay. That's where the double shot, I believe, came from. All right, awesome. At least you got your triple. Now we finally got the tri triple. Let's see if we can do a thing with it. So having the double shot and the triple shot will allow me to throw more sub weapons. And in Castlevania 3, the holy water sub weapon actually stacks when you put multiple of them in an enemy's hitbox. You're going to see how quick this boss gets vaporized. Are we going for the swag campfire? Yes, we are! But nope. we didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. One and done. I like to have a bunch of fires here. I'm sorry, fuck Doc. <laughs> then have our whip over the fires. A little campfire. How we start our run. It's just a little bit of swag. Yeah, so... Kind of the gimmick with Castlevania 3 is the choose your own adventure thing. We're going to skip the clock tower stage because those two, that route's only relevant for grand speed runs. Or yeah. any percent. We're just going to skip that out, right? Really neat. So we got a, yeah, we got a couple pretty uh, tame screens right here. So if you have a any time to read a couple donations, that'd be all right. 
Absolutely, I have $100 from Pucci and Pucho. Thanks for all this amazing week. Hyped for Castlevania now. Mom, Granddad, this is for you. Thank you so much for your donation. I also have a $896 anonymous donation. They don't leave a comment, but thank you so much. All right, so now we're on the L screen, and our drop count is four, so we're on DEFCON 1. It's dangerous. Be, be prepared for... Ooh, oh, knife. Knife behind. That's perfectly what you want on this screen. All right, Al's not trolling. No double spawns either. That's good. Yeah, the Al's are pretty interesting. We're going to manipulate these Al's to take different swoops by jumping at random intervals. So when they swoop down, they're locking into your position. Yep. You want to take just enough damage. I mean, if we could just not take damage, that'd be great. But the Al's are... Uh... They're vicious. They want blood. Very. Now this screen we're gonna take specific damage boosts. Damage boosts are great. Like these bone cutters, they have a lot of HP. So we don't want to really deal with them. But uh, jumping on a fireball that they shoot and then high framing through them, that's that's how we deal with that. It's really nice. So we get another one of these uh pick your uh, route. Things and uh, since we're doing we Alucard, we have to go down. The other route would have gone. Yep, this is where the two routes diverge. We get to of see... course, we get to stage four is a another danger point in the run, especially if you go in with low health. Yarp. There's a meat at the end of stage three, but we're gonna not get that. The frogs. All right, we got. Well, this on your prayer worked so far, so yes! good. Yes. Except for in the drops. <laughs> <laughs> We've already gotten seven drops in this run. And that frog oh, well. tried to we'll attack. Take... <laughs> take you by to the frogs. We'll take frog RNG over drop RNG. And Quite now... A few enemies um, that are kind of unique. Like, you only yep. see them one time. And now time. we get the Grimers. I mean, uh, Mudmen. I mean, Pokemon totally didn't steal their, uh, Grimer from this game, I swear. It's interesting, like, we... We then talked about how the holy water is the most broken item, but here we switch, and then we switch back. So that'll come back later. It's very yeah, deliberate. We're gonna set up a nip for, uh... He oh. only wants a double right now. Yeah. Not so a triple. Need. Yeah, we're setting up. We're only gonna farm up to a double this time around because we're gonna set up a nip on the final stage with a different sub weapon. Mm hmm. You get the triple shot variant of that weapon you use against Dracula. What, what, what is that uh, trick save? Like, what? At least 10 seconds, right? Gotta be. Than that. <laughs> it's gotta be. I don't think anyone's actually, you know, said how long it saves, but it saves a lot of time. Very nice. Also, a Tyrion in chat says, obviously, Grimer's purple instead of brown. I was like, yeah, I know, right? All right. Look, the color palette on the so NES we just took care of the. Just took care of the boss of stage four. That's probably the easiest fight in the game with the whip. We're gonna see him again later. It gets actually very challenging if you accidentally miss the timing, but yeah, the timing's pretty gentle. Sachi, Alucard comes out yeah. at the end of the stage, I promise. Spoilers. I mean, we know that it's the Alucard route. Yeah. We apologize. Right, so we're going to do a little trick there to manipulate the fireman to despawn its flame or the pathway that Trevor needs to drop down. Rolled off screen. Yep. And now... And now we got blobs. If you... Yeah, blobs. <laughs> Not our friend. Quite annoying. Especially if you run CB2. Uh, these are friendlier blobs, for sure. Yeah. Hopefully you don't take any damage to your upper path. That'll be good. Cool. Taking... Taking... Intentionally slow yeah, down. Yeah, taking a little bit of a happens. safe strat so that we can show off the top route. It saves two seconds, so it's a net gain over Vert taking the bottom route. All right. And thankfully, there was no and drop. Past... <laughs> yeah, that would have been, I think, four. And that uh, fireman drop, so... We're almost in the clear. Some scary spikes, but we're just going to use them. Yep. That's why we did the uh, manip strat on the fireman, so I could have extra health to do that particular boost. But now you only have one hit. 
for the yep. Alucard fight, but you only need one hit, right? You don't need health. I think so. Health is just a suggestion. And you have three hearts. Basically all you need. Just higher than zero. All right. So now we're going to try and get a two cycle so, on this bad boy. Say hello to Alucard. AKA right. Dracula like clear. attempt number one. <laughs> He basically looks exactly like Dracula from Castlevania 1, and there he's gone! Two cycle! Pretty much the same type of fight as Dracula from Dracula's Phase 1 from Castlevania 1. Although his fireballs are a lot easier to dodge and you have a platform to deal damage to his head. Yep. And that nice showed off back. more of the uh, Holy Waters DPS. Yeah, on an individual hit, the Holy Water actually does less damage than the whip, but it does damage at a much faster rate, so it pretty much makes up for it. Now we have so Alucard. Yep, this is where the run actually starts to get interesting. What? You don't find Trevor interesting? What is this? Well, it can only damage boost. Alright, we're gonna take a blob boost. Not quite as infamous as the Castlevania 2 blob boost, of course. Also, that blob has no concept of gravity. What is gravity? A suggestion. Especially for Alucard. I'm gonna stop and let this advantage hit us. I'm gonna bat under stairs and fly straight to the door. We got an extra heart somewhere. It must've been a drop. All right, so we got our third and final branching pathway and we're gonna take for the first time, we're gonna take the upper route. Because the lower route is a pain. <laughs> Very much. We have tried to route it into runs, but it is just too hard just to route it. Too long and too, it's just too long. Yeah, it doesn't have the same. It's a Lord and taking the cave route. All right, so we're coming up on the boss in stage five. We're gonna switch back to Trevor because Double shot holy water pretty much vaporizes any yeah. boss. And if you remember the boss from stage one, it's his brother, Leg Day. Because sometimes uh, he likes to try and that's why I took the, That's why I didn't go for the damage boost. Yep. At the beginning of the you screen. You always take the safety route that in the marathon. That is not how you fight him. Well, we got the campfire. I forgot to do the campfire strat. I mean, I usually switch as soon as that fight's over, so. It doesn't matter no. whether or not you switch to back to Alucard at the end of that fight or the beginning of this stage, because it is the same amount of time to switch characters. 4.5 seconds. Yeah, it is a shame. About 4 .6. That it takes so long. Otherwise, you could fun stuff, switching around and stuff. But no, in this game, it just takes basically forever. Yeah, surprise Fishman. Unfortunately, I kept the heart, so we can still do the strats. It's pretty, this right here is a pretty new development to the run. Flying over the toilet paper throwing mummies. Yes. And we got bad mummy RNG, so I'm down to heart. Who's actually going to mess up my uh, ability to do a fast strat? You need to have 10, I have 9. So we're going to slow it down here. Otherwise, I would just transform at the bottom of the stairs. Good thing I... I'm going to take care of that guy. Ah, uh, so you weren't going to thread the needle. Bad. Now we're going to have to do a little trick. This axe. Got the low axe. Go and through the block. we got the got first it. clip. Very nice. Safety meet. Second one right after. So... Excellent. The way we that works is similar to in Castlevania 1, but only Alucard can do that. There are ways to make it work with Sypha, but it's a little more uh, intensive. Yeah, yeah, damage boosting through a uh, little one tile large ores, that's, uh, that's a thing that only Alucard can do due to his uh, turning into a bat. Is that right? And his weird hitbox. <laughs> yeah. Because he's taller. <laughs> he's taller, but yet his hitbox is weird. 
We will see that on yeah. stage uh, eight. eight. Yeah. We're going to see it on stage eight. Right. So now we're coming on the longest and the most annoying stage to run, stage seven. And the hardest of the um, clips, technically. There are ways to make it easier oh, really? by manipulating the flea man. We need the flea man, it's very good. Uh oh. Oop. Almost got knocked down. Yeah, that's. Yeah. But uh, you saw what he was trying to do there with the flea man to get him in the right position to bounce you through. But it doesn't always work because flea man doesn't like to cooperate, even when you do manipulate. Yeah, unfortunately, I transformed D bat too late. I'm transformed from the bat. Yeah. Curious that that. Because there's a very oh, small that window, isn't it? Worse. Isn't it only like a two or three frame window for that one? Not sure. It's smaller than the others, that's all I know. A little damage boost to get that faster. But yeah, the theme of this run is basically damage boost a lot and then fly over all the other things that you can't do really damage boost. Yeah. Platforming is merely Health as... and heart management are critical and when you play as Alucard. And platforming is just merely a suggestion with the Alucard, so, you know. Even more of a subjection when we get to see Alucard and Soten. Upcoming is another bat, but this time we're not going to use Trevor and his whip. This is actually a lot tough. Because you have to time it perfect. And I missed on shot number three. So now we yep. actually get to see that these bats, they like turn into multiple smaller bats each time. All right. And they like to uh, one more. move in weird, weird patterns. They like to move away from you. Right, there away from you, into you, kind of depends on which phase of the fight it's in. One reason why we needed a lot of hearts, fly all the way up and if having to wait on blocks. And we did the faster strat there. If you do it... Alucard's in, bat form can also jump. If you did that with uh, out Alucard, you would have to wait for those blocks. And it's so long. Those birds were out for blood. But Alucard gets a small invisibil invincibility window when he turns into a bat and out of a bat. So, since those birds uh, die upon hitting your hitbox, you can, you know, take advantage of that. Ugh. That was the hardest thing to do. In th we just got past the hardest thing to do in this game. Slipping underneath that Medusa head. It is a very small window, and uh, you kind of clench a little every time. Don't you? Yeah. All right, we're coming up on an auto scroller here. If you don't like clenching, why would you speed run, right? Yeah. So right. you said auto scroller. Does that mean that we have time for a little bit of donations? Yep, I do. Very cool. I have eighty-three dollars from Peking Bill. You might remember. I have hi Peking Boo here. Thanks for watching my run. As promised, here is seventeen dollars for seventeen deaths, and forty dollars for eight gold berries plus twenty-five that I owe you for getting Wolf to sing. You are my prime sub. It was an absolute blast, and it's bittersweet that I may never be able to attend an attend event in person because of my arcade setup. Good luck to the rest of the runners, and have an awesome time, everyone. So, if you're keeping track, that is fifty-seven dollars for the berries and deaths, which I did say I would match. I saw a few few people in chat said they would match it as well. So, if you want to, that is the amount. And that was perfect right, timing. I think we got time for one more. Absolutely. I have $100 from Asura getting hyped for the Castlevania block, but who can resist the siren call of super glitchy cast runs? Good luck, your name. Give us this day our bless RNG. And now we have the end of stage seven, where got, both uh, routes have three bosses. Of course, in the Alucard route, this is the first time you see these guys. You have two mummies, a Cyclops, and then Leviathan. Oh, good. Cyclops cooperated this Yay, time. Yay, he charged. Tootsie, you want to tell us how annoying it is and to make dead. him charge since you do many routes with that guy? <laughs> yeah, he, he just an RNG. <laughs> and he, you can yeah. only hit his head. So you need to get him over to those, those blocks on the side. So you can holy water his face. Leviathan, not so much. You can just holy water his face. Yeah. 
wasn't sure there. I didn't want to take a death, so yeah. I let him jump a third time. Uh, yeah, getting he a two did cycles. the three cycle instead of the two cycle. Two cycles are really hard. Great side. Yeah. And we're over three on campfires <laughs> for our running total. Thanks. But that's about the only thing that's gone wrong so far. Uh, yeah, next you... comes up a familiar song. Indeed. Could you say it's Where I'm experiencing... Deja Vu? Hmm. Hmm, good question. I'm gonna switch back to Alucard again. And why are you doing that? It's not that we... Oh, wait. We have two clips on this stage, don't we? Yep. Yep, I'm down the heart. Not good. I mean, it's easy to get one heart back. So then instead of transforming on the stairs, I'm gonna take a jump. Ooh, that was dangerously close. He, he, he was trying to poke you. Yeah, I think it was within a couple pixels of actually successfully doing so. There's a clip. And it's the first one. All right, let's hope the Axe Knight cooperates. Be good RNG from him. Nice. Yes, first All try, right. low axe. Now that's uh, yeah. Olive Card's weird eye box. So it's taller than Trevor's, so when he jumps, his head part of the hitbox actually goes through the floor, allowing you to take damage from that axe. All right, so we're coming up on this bridge. It's crumbling, but we're just going to fly past because Alucard. And the bath form moves faster than he walks. Yeah, so it reduces even lag. If, uh, about the same speed even if that bridge didn't lag a lot, we'd still want to fly faster. So reducing lag is very significant. All right, we're going to deal with death here. I was being very quiet nice. to right. make sure that you heard your uh, little audio cue on the first part of the fight. Eh, I got him. But yes, death has two phases. Are you not? <laughs> there we, we just death. melted both of them pretty quickly. He didn't go... You're listening in carefully. You could hear two hits on each fireball attack. So that happens when you have multiple fireballs overlapping in a single boss hit box. So it takes care of them pretty quickly. And you have to get those double hits to make sure death doesn't kill you. Yep. And now for probably one of the most uh, clench-worthy screens of the game. Fleeman Alley, part three. Well, part two, because Castlevania 2 doesn't have a Fleeman Alley. You don't have Fleeman. Oh, baby, is he going to do it? Is he going to save the 10 seconds with the JC strat? Yes, he does. I think that's been around. I'm pretty sure the strat's been around longer than JC's been running this game. Could be wrong. <laughs> it was very nice. Yeah, some of those jumps are very, very precise with the shooting and jumping. But he got him. Yeah. It's actually a very difficult screen to execute like that. The fact that you got it in a marathon run is... Uh, Real good. Yeah, we, we don't want to take any more damage anymore. Or, well, me, sometimes. But very specifically. We don't want to take extra yeah. damage. Now that you take four full bars every exactly. time you get hit, damage you can scaling. only take three hits and not die. I'm going to take a couple damage boosts here. Yeah, but these are planned. They're fine. Yep. If he had messed up on Flea Man Alley, he wouldn't be able to take these. Well, I could. I'd have to get the meat and the end of this section. I mean, if you took one hit in Three Man Alley, yeah. Two, no. Yeah, we're coming up on another auto-scroller here. This one's a little bit different than the last one. Yep. So, we got enough time for, I think, two, maybe three donations. Awesome, I can do. We're playing through. I have $50 from Lastro 843. Castlevania 3 was one of my favorite games as a kid. It took me forever to beat it. Now, let's see it happen in half an hour. Thanks so much for your donation. And I have a $25 donation from the username equals pants. I have an important question for the runner. Why is the Castlevania series soundtrack 100% certified jams? That's a good question. Good question. Um, <laughs> because Konami and Capcom were fighting in the NES era for, uh, you know, who had the better soundtracks. We all know who won. All right, now, remember how he has that weird hitbox where he was able to, you know, take damage before? Yeah, nah. It, for some reason, that fu that one fuzzy ball does not do damage to either Trevor or Alucard if it hits them while they're standing right. still. A little bit... 
can say a little bit slow coming out of the auto scroller and finish before we did instead of simultaneously. So, my favorite birds. That way. Let's grab an extra heart. Not going for the clock. We can fly an extra. That last Medusa was practicing. That last Medusa was practicing being a troll, yes. <laughs> so now we're coming up on Doppelganger. We're switching back to Belmont because Holy Water stun locks enemies, and we don't want Doppelganger moving around. That was a very we're just good make sure quick he's kill. Dead. brings us to the final stage. Why? And the reason why mm. we kept the double. All right. I am going to have to concentrate for this one. All right. Shh. But enjoy the uh quiet in the bleachers block theme music to start. All right, we're good. Yes. Excellent. Got it. So what he did was use the holy water to get the triple and then grab the axe and then he's got a triple axe which is the you know combo you need for the final boss yeah it's similar strat that you see in cb1 with the uh triple shot holy water manip similar idea and here he's trying to manipulate the, the medusas to reduce lag by staying near the top of the screen the top of the screen does kill you if you let it go too far so you just gotta be Perfect with your timing on that. Yeah. If you're not, a lot of, problem. Yeah, you got a lot of elements on this screen. Medusa heads, you got moving gears, and they actually keep going even if you pause the game. Yep. All right, so now we're coming down the home stretch. Will he go for the final clip, or will he take the we're safe? Gonna go track? for it. practicing this one too much and right, he nails it Fair he enough. nails it people so basically it's just dracula left three phases and can uh, you get the one cycle on phase three this uh got a lot of questions to ask him <laughs> basically trevor's show again so, yeah uh, yeah. Alucard has done his Unfortunately, job. Unfortunately, Alucard really Alucard's isn't got to too be many his daddy issues to be doing this boss fight. He's got to wait 400 years to take oh, that God. one. Oh, good. my! Ouch. Oh. All right. So... Gives us a chance to show off something else, I suppose. Yeah. So what happened there was there's a very small window of pixels on the ground to be capable of um, manipulating the nice. um, fire. Here's a thing. Yeah, that was a that was a trick from the Trevor only run. Yeah, it, it requires the right bat, but he got it, and then then it's pretty easy. But RNG. Now we're gonna farm a double shot. But yeah, what happened was there's only like a couple pixels where you can stand in order to do a bit of damage on Dracula before he stands up. And what happened was Freeland was on like one pixel too far to the left and the fire pillars ate him. Actually, I think I was a lot closer to Drac than that. I was pretty much almost on top of him. I was trying to give you more credit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 20 in a double, that should be enough. Yeah. All right. Attempt number two. Uh, gave me my jump and ate another one. All right, this is gonna be two cycle phase one. All right, phase two, the face face. Face phase. Five faces of Holy. Dracula. Holy die off. And since we're off script here, it's gonna look a little... Not like a speed run, but more like a... It's gonna be fast, but not as fast as it could be. All right, final phase. And now, here we go. Now, right. Dracula's got his lasers, but can we beat Pazuzu Dracula in one cycle? You're not. Never mind. Yeah, it's a one cycle! Nice. So, all right. 
So, time. And oh. there we go. Dracula is dead. Everyone's loving it. I think pretty much the only thing that went wrong was the Drac 1 fight, and that's pretty much why I forgot where to stand. The castle is crumbling. It did it, buddy. Now I get our special ending. Does somebody want to read this? All right, I'll do, do, Why don't you do it? I'll do the Dragon Ball Z thing. Trevor made many sacrifices. The long fight is over. Dracula is dead, and all other spirits are asleep. The battle was won by Trevor and Alucard, but Alucard feels guilty because he killed his real father. Hashtag daddy issues. Trevor realizes this as he stands there thinking about Alucard. After this, the fight... After this fight, the Belmont name shall be honored by all people, and in 400 years, Alucard will wake up to finish his battle with his father. And actually have offensive utility. <laughs> Only with the shield run. Alright, so anyway, I'd like to thank the uh, uh, Game Song Quick for ha hosting this run. And, uh, raising money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. We're going to be running through the credits here. I'd also like to thank uh, Kuchisi and Dizdon for helping out with the commentary. You guys did a pretty good job. You guys did a great job. I mean, thank you for having us. Indeed. Thank you. I mean, maybe next time that yeah. you have us with, it won't just be on commentary. Maybe uh, next time we could maybe, I don't know, organize a race. What are what? Are, yeah, we'll definitely try. What, what what happened last time? Uh, all three of us were ahead at various stages, but Kutsu won. <laughs> what an amazing run! Let's go ahead and get in some of these fantastic Castlevania donations. I have a $20 donation from Sushi Elemental that says, Dr. Acula to the boss room. Calling Dr. Acula. Please come to the boss room. Thank you. Dr. Acula did in fact come to the boss room. He saw he did not conquer. Thank you so much for your donation. I have a $57 donation from Maggie Poo 3 matching the donation for deaths and hearts collected in that incredible Celeste run. I can't even play that game with a regular controller. That was incredible. Thank you so much, Maggie Poo, for your matched donation. It means so, so much. ATVQ 2021 has some amazing sponsors. Fangamer is a video game merchandise company with new AGDQ merchandise available now, including an event badge, limited edition pin, desk mat, mugs, socks, and more. 100% of profits from GDQ merch sales supports PCF. You can learn more at www.fangamer.com slash GDQ. And another one of our amazing sponsors is Devolver Digital. Loop Hero is a game where the Lich has thrown in the world into a timeless loop and plunged its inhabitants into never-ending chaos. Wield an expanding deck of mystical cards in Loop Hero, place enemies, buildings, and terrain along each unique expedition loop for the brave hero. Wishlist Loop Hero on Steam at loophero.com.
Welcome back to AGDQ 2021 online. We actually have an amazing interview between Scent and the Blacktastic himself. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on over to them. Hello everyone and welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 online. My name is Scent and joining me this morning is the Blacktastic. Bobby, how are you doing? I should probably unmute myself. I'm feeling pretty okay. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for uh, bringing me on for this interview. It's a, it's a joy to be here. Of, of course, of course. It's great to hear you. It's also great to be able to hear you. <laughs> um, so you're going to be running uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2 a little bit later in the marathon. And we actually had an incentive for that run, for you to play Episode 2 instead of uh, Episode 1. That incentive has been met, so we are going to see Episode 2. Um, why don't you just briefly tell the donors what that means for the run and why specifically you were, I saw you pushing for it on Twitter, why you wanted that to happen so hard. Of course, of course. I mean, first off, I want to thank everyone who was who was donating uh, very generously towards that incentive. Episode two, I mean, we, we love to see, you know, runners, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, vault through, you know, a lot of heavy obstacles, a lot of tall obstacles, um, like episode, like, like a, the kind of like a second playthrough of Castlevania one for the NES. It's a, it's a more of like a, you know, thorough, harder playthrough of, of Curse of the Moon two. Um, all the episodes are kind of like, you know, like episodic, like they, they kind of use like the same stages, but there's a lot of different assets that are like, you know, um, thrown in uh it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot harder difficulty like on the bright side you do get a couple of uh, allies you know that stick with you throughout the entirety of the run so you're gonna be seeing a lot of teamwork making a dream work in that way as well sounds awesome now i know you speed run both classic vania and uh, both curse of the moon games um you know when i think of classic vania i think of uh, you know, Castlevania 3, I think of all of kind of the unintended uses of those allied powers, Cypha's free spell just letting you completely break the game. Are we going to see anything like that in Curse of the Moon 2? So, so you're not going to be seeing anything like like game breaking, like I, in the original Curse of the Moon, like we, we've seen on GDQ before. Uh, we've, we've seen like m many like you know zips and like stage clips and like all that stuff. You're you're actually going to be seeing a lot of speed tech that like you, the viewer at home, can like easily follow. Like oh, there was so much recoil behind this big gun that uh, he's able to like use this as like a triple jump or, 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 or like an infinite jump. Like, Rob, like uh, Robert and Hachi are like both do have like, you know, unique character traits that just make moving around the stages pretty fun to watch and to, you know, play. Awesome, and you confirmed it right there. I was gonna have to ask, are we gonna see Hachi in episode two? Because <laughs> Hachi is indeed the best boy. Uh, if you haven't seen Hachi yet, it's a it's a Shiva in a tank. That's that's all you need to know. Dog in a tank. Oh, good old Final Fantasy VI Magitech mech and this little this little Corgi Popo and oh, just a, the goodest boy. Just the happens best. to know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, you mentioned that Curse of the Moon 1 was was pretty broken, had those same kind of zips that uh, we see in uh, Dracula's Curse. Um, I, I know you run a lot of 2D platformer games. We've seen you on the GDQ stage run uh, Mega Man 9. We've seen you run Guacamelee. Uh, of those two kind of varieties of platformers, let's break them down into the games that really have those, those big glitches, those zips, uh, the crazy tricks, as well as uh, the games that are just kind of more straightforward skill-based platforming and memorization. Uh, which do you prefer? And in general, what draws you to this kind of like 2D platforming environment? That's actually, that's actually like a really good question because uh, when I first came into speedrunning, my first two games were kind of like those opposite ends of the spectrum, like kind of like by the book, not really any like glitchy, you know, kind of have to like, you know, rewarding the heavy execution. And then you have Symphony of the Night, which you can go, we can blow through two castles in 20 minutes, <laughs> you know. Um, it, it's, just, it's just all, a, it's just a matter of like, you know, like which is faster, which is fast, you know, like, um, in Mega Man 9, you're not able to, you know, do any of, like, the screen wraps like you couldn't say Mega Man 2, but it's still a really good game because it rewards that that really nice execution. And, again, it's it's easy for the viewer to follow, so then you just be like, oh, you know, you don't have to ask in chat, Look, how did that happen? Wow, like, like that, that was a really good jump, or that was a really good damage boost, you know? So, uh, I, it's, just, it's, just a, it's just a matter of, like, you know, like, how visual the technical and speed feats are so that it can be like appealing to not only like the the, the runner but the audience because so you can say like you know hey that's cool 
for for sure, for sure. Now, I I have it on good word that uh, a few devs from Inti Creates might actually be watching the run this morning. Do you have anything you want to say to them? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not not nervous, are you? Is the, uh, I'll I'll be honest. I'm 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 always really nervous to uh, you know try to like strut this stuff in like a really like consistent way and especially in like a one take marathon you know setting you know i just really want to you know not only like perform at my best but also like you know sell the game like you know like like curse of the moon like especially this game only came out less than six months ago and I, i'm gonna go into a like a like a really big like uh you know storytelling in in the run about like you know like why you should be treating this as like the spiritual successor to castlevania so uh like I'm, I'm just excited for all of this to take place in about like half an hour or so. So, yeah, it's it's coming up real soon. Uh, so we have a couple of questions from social media that I, I wanted to ask for you. Um, so from Cartridge Blowers, uh, shout out to the Cartridge Blowers. We have a question. Uh, Blacktastic, which Bloodstained game is your favorite to speedrun, and what makes this game different from the rest? I'm just gonna go ahead and expand that because I know you run Classicvania. Which mm -hmm. Castlevania is your favorite to speedrun? Oh. And I picked up I picked up so many Castlevanias in the in the last uh, in the last like year or so, but I will always always probably go back to Super Castlevania Four for like the all time favorite Castlevania. Like it is so hard, it is so hard to be super consistent. But once you do, it is one of the most rewarding experiences through speed running. Once you see like that time being cut down. When it comes to favorite Bloodstained game. Um, Ritual of the Night is extremely fun, especially in the Zangetsu. I actually ran that uh, last year's SGDQ, and uh, like like the movement feats in that are just like uh, extra characters in uh, like other Castlevania games, like Julius mode, Maxim mode, and like all that stuff. So like I, again, like just just having things be like really visually fascinating and a little bit broken. Uh, Ritual of the Night's really good for that. For for sure, for sure, putting on a show is always a really fun part about speedrunning. Uh, from Brutal Mellow, great question. Uh, what would you say is the most enticing part of the Curse of the Room, uh, Curse of the Moon to run that could encourage more people to speedrun it? Sell this game, Bobby. Tell me why people need to pick up Curse of the Moon too. First off, shout out to all the hosts, by the way. Like I, I, I see y'all in there. Um, second of all, um, why you want to play Curse of the Moon too is that, is that there's a little bit of something for everyone. Inti Creates does an amazing job of packing a lot of content into like a 10, 15, 20 dollar package. There are a lot of characters to play as, not just Zangetsu, not just the good old boy Hachi, not just the bald headed uh, soldier Robert. But there are uh, there are at least you know like six seven characters that you can play as. There's a co-op mode. So whenever things become safe again, invite a friend on over, start breaking some records with your buddy. You know, like like there's just a lot of content um, within within this game. It's actually on sale right now. So uh, if you uh, so if you go through all of this like through its entirety, like I'm sure you will find something with it. Like it took me a while to to unlock ultimate mode, but in just a bit I'm going to show you why that's entirely worth it. Yeah, not only is it on sale right now, we actually have a couple of Steam keys to give away as prizes. So get those donations in. Could not resist the quick plug there. Yeah. Minimum uh, $5 donation for one of those uh, keys, if I recall correctly. Uh, you could recall perfectly correctly. Uh, from Blackheart Games, the series has, series has some amazing bosses. Uh, which is your favorite and which is your least favorite? And I have to just really quickly agree. Um, the Curse of the Moon series has some really visually beautiful bosses. But I, I just extend that to Castlevania in general. Like, What's your favorite boss to fight? What's the favorite boss from a point of spectacle? And what boss do you just never want to see again? Legion. That's, 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 part, that's partly a really good answer. Uh, um, for the Bloodstained series, I'm going to... I'm going to take it back to uh, uh, Curse of the Moon 1, the twin dragons. Uh, they're actually named Valak, V-A-L-A-C. And uh, I remember the uh, AGDQ crowd getting an extremely hype for whenever they did their, uh, you know, their entrance cry, which is just a big old woo, and I, I like, and like just the way that it looks, and like, like, uh, there's a second phase in that boss of Curse of the Moon, and then there's like the Ritual of the Night version of the boss, which is just auto scroller, not really anything like, not really anything like of, of like much spectacle from like that. I just feel like NT Creates just like really like really goes all out when it comes to like boss design and like and, and the crowd agrees.
For sure, for sure. Well, thank you so much for being with me here today, Bobby. Just a couple more questions uh, before we send it back up to the front for more of this amazing Castlevania block. What, what's what's in the future for you? What, what have you got your eye on speedrunning right now? Uh, I, I really I really do want to return to Symphony of the Night in some way. Um, uh, people know that I like speedrun on like pretty... Uh, pretty unique like peripherals like arcade sticks and controllers and hitboxes and all that stuff um when it comes to like uh symphony of the night like richter mode like he entirely plays like a fighting game character so i really want to go back to that and then um like we were talking about with like uh like you know other empty creates games like Mega Man 9 i kind of want to tackle on more either empty games or or just Mega Man games in general like like i, I really really miss being a Mega Man speedrunner for sure, for sure. I, I know something else uh, that I think is going to be in your future as well. You just started a show on the GDQ Hotfix, isn't that correct? That's right. Uh, so it's called Super Boss Brothers. It, it's definitely, it's definitely like not not a speed run show in in the speed run channel, but like uh, it's more of like a like a like arcade ish uh, sort of thing. Me and Big John uh, take a couple of like you know your favorite folks, and we put them through a gauntlet of like seven uh, retro games or you know specific challenges and whatnot. Everyone comes through every other Friday, and it, it, it is certainly like a really good time just to like you know like let loose and laugh a little bit. No, you know you. You don't really need to, uh, you know, uh, feel to perform at your best, especially when it comes to, like, games that you have no idea uh, what you're going to be playing. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Super Boss Brothers, uh, me and Big John, and, um, and uh, like, this, this, this is only, like, I think, like, episode seven or eight, um, but it's been nothing but fantastic, and I, and I really, really hope that you folks come on through at the end of the month for uh, our next episode. Yeah, you, you heard him every other week, Friday night, right here on the Games Done Quick channel. Make sure to check out Super Boss Brothers. Uh, anything else you wanted to say, Bobby, before we threw it back to Castlevania Block? I... <laughs> I just hope everyone here uh, enjoys the rest of the marathon. There's going to be a lot a lot coming up right after this. And um, shout-outs to the Brigade. You all know who you are. And, and get the Corgis, the hype-ups in the chat because uh, you're going to be seeing the best puppo in just a minute. <laughs> so, you, uh, yeah. you, you heard Bobby. Get the Corgis in chat. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, that was uh, Bobby the Blacktastic. We're going to send it back up to the front as we continue this amazing morning block of Castlevania games. You don't want to miss a minute of it, and stay tuned just a little bit later for that Curse of the Moon 2 run. <laughs> What an amazing interview. Welcome back to AGDQ 2021 online. Let's go ahead and get some of these donations read. I have a $25 donation from Desregoff. Castlevania games have always been a huge part of my life, so I had to donate during the Castlevania block. Keep up the great work and let's continue to contribute to this worthy cause. Thank you so much for your donation. And speaking of cause, we have raised $1,636,631.85. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you all so much for contributing to that. We are doing just so well. And speaking of how quickly we did that, we have a $10 donation from C Flare. So we've already got the 1 million speedrun incentive. Put this donation towards